So today we have a 2010 Chrysler 300 all-wheel drive. Customer reports the transmission appears to be in limp mode because it won't drive over 30 kilometers an hour. Uh, we got some warning lights on the dash, check engine light, TPMS light. Uh, looks like it says T case in the information center up there where the odometer would typically be. And we got a traction control light, ABS light, and ESP BIS light on. So we're going to scan this thing and see what kind of codes it retrieves. We're going to start right from scratch here. I don't think I've ever scanned this before, so this will be a new record. So I'm just going to ID the vehicle. It should automatically ID, I would expect. Yeah, it did. 2010 Chrysler 300 all-wheel drive, 3.5 V6. Okay. So let's do a code scan and a pre pre-repair code scan and see what comes up. I suspect the wheel speed sensor or output shaft speed sensor problem. Well, so far we've got implausible left wheel distance signal received, implausible left rear. Now this says left wheel, but it doesn't say which one. This one says left rear, implausible right rear. Vehicle speed sensor 1 performance, 501 left rear wheel speed, right rear wheel speed says it or well, right rear wheel speed comparative performance so looks like one of the rear speed sensors or both of the rear speed sensors might be misreading save the vehicle report here CAN bus circuit code, CAN bus circuit code, CAN bus circuit code, implausible data received from ABS received from TCM so that's what's turning on all these lights. Got some HVAC problems too. Recirculation travel door. R too large. Heated seat. Can bus, can bus, can bus, can bus. Tire pressure sensors. And then the OBD2 code, we have a P0501. Vehicle speed sensor, A range performance. So before we get too carried away here, I think we'll put it up on the hoist. Do a visual of all the wheel speed sensor wires and then we'll focus on the ABS and look at data from the ABS. So we're going to have a look at the rear speed sensor wires see if we can see anything obviously wrong. They look okay. I don't know why that grommet's coming out of the trunk here. Maybe something's in the trunk has crushed the wires. See the wires running across the top here. Everything looks intact there. That speed sensor wire looks like it's intact. Now I don't know if it's common for the reluctors to fail in these things. It certainly is on the GMs. And the front speed sensor wires look pretty good. No obvious damage to them. No play in the wheel bearing, although I didn't check the rear wheel bearings yet. Brake rotors are getting rusty. Rear tires are pretty much done, especially this left rear tire. This one is in very poor shape, no tread left on it, almost down to the cords. So we're going to have to check the wheel bearings and then we'll put it in ABS mode on the scan tool and spin the wheels and see if we got a speed signal. So here's the four wheel speed sensor data. I'm going to spin the wheels one at a time. Probably going to turn both sides. There's the left front. Right front. Now both rear should be working and I don't have signals from either rear. The other strange thing is I can turn the front wheels as if it's in neutral here. Hmm, that's strange. But no rear speed signals. I'm going to check to see what's common to fail on these. 
So there's the rear wheel speed sensor wires coming up through the trunk floor in front of the battery here. And I don't see any damage to the wires. They look good. I'm going to try and uh, move that connector down below and see if, uh, if it's damaged above the exhaust there. So I did a network code clear and the left rear, rear wheel speed sensor circuit code comes back immediately. I'm not totally convinced that that's all that's wrong with this, putting this transmission in a limp mode. I can't honestly see it doing that. But again, I'm going to graph the data from the rear speed sensors. The other thing that bothers me is the front wheels turn as if they're not connected to that transfer case. Maybe that's normal. I've never really paid attention to one of these things. Here's left rear, right rear. No speed signals from either one when I spin it. Signals. The connector going through the floor looks okay, although it was partially dislodged, it looks okay. I'm going to find out how to test these speed sensors. So here's the information on the rear speed sensors. The controller sends 12 volts to this sensor. The circuit is both the voltage supply and the signal wire. The second wire is grounded through the controller. The sensor has an internal magneto resistance bridge that alters the voltage and the amperage of the signal circuit. Voltage and amperage is changed by the magnetic induction when tooth tone wheel passes wheel speed sensor. The signal varies in two ways. Voltage will vary by about 400 millivolts, 0.4 volts, from 10.4 to 10.8. The amperage will vary from 0 0.007 to 0 0.014 amps. So I've got the uh, lab scope hooked up to this and I've got no speed signal from either rear wheel. I find it very hard to believe that both speed sensors would fail the exact same way simultaneously and I find it odd that it's only setting a fault code for the left rear as a current fault code. But I'm going to go drive it now and see exactly how it responds. So there is a reluctor on the outboard CV joint. Uh, I removed the nut on the left axle shaft and pushed it in so I could inspect that reluctor. It looks intact. It doesn't appear to be broken. I just find it very hard to believe that both speed sensors signals are missing simultaneously and only one is setting a fault code. So I'm going to look at the electrical schematic. So here's the electrical circuit for the left rear and the right rear speed sensors. It goes from the anti-lock brake module through connector 104 to the actual rear speed signals, rear speed sensors. There doesn't appear to be any other connectors in between. Other than that pass-through grommet, which I believe you have to de-pin to replace the sensor. Uh, I tested both of these plus wires, this uh, dark green and light blue, and the dark green and gray wire for 12 volts with the key on, and I have that. Um, I'm going to find connector 104 because that would be a logical place to go. That's somewhere under the hood. Let's find out where that is. So there's connector location 104 right there. It's under the hood. Looks like it's under the plenum in that plenum area. Let's see if there's a connector view. Here's the connector view. So it's a fairly large density connector. <coughs> Let's see if we can find that connector. Well, there's this connector in the back left corner here, or right corner, but that's not it. It's a connector with a large clamp on it. I think one of these style connectors here under this fuse panel, but that's not apparently it. So I don't see it back here. There's a module back here. It's not down there. So maybe we're going to have to check at the actual ABS module. This thing is setting CAN bus codes too, and there's CAN bus circuits in there as well. So I'm starting to wonder if we got some green corrosion in that connector. So here's that rear speed sensor disconnected. There's a little snap ring that must be removed. There's a snap ring that's got to be removed. And then the connector body slides out. Uh, no signs of corrosion in there on the pins. 
and that angle that this connector comes through the floor is actually correct. That's the way it's supposed to be for whatever reason. It looks like it's dislodged, but it's not. Um, so this body of the connector is fine, and the, the one on the left side is actually the left speed sensor going that way, and the one on the right side is the right speed sensor. So I've removed it completely, and that should theoretically generate a fault code for the right speed sensor as well. Remember, we have a left speed sensor co active code, but no right one, and that's curious. But we also have no signals from the right ones as well. That connector 104 that I was searching for is actually apparently under the dash behind the glove box. I took a brief look in there and I couldn't see any signs of uh, moisture <clears throat> and it's going to require disassembly of the glove box to get in there. So I'm thinking I'm going to test the circuits from here back to the ABS unit up by the right front corner of the engine bay and just confirm the wires are okay. Not shorted together, not shorted to ground, not shorted to voltage. So I've got those two, those three active codes now. Um, I think the right rear wheel speed comparative performance code could be because of me road testing it last night. So I'm going to clear these codes and rescan it and see if the two, the 1020 and the 102B come back instantly. And of course, Chrysler only lets you clear the codes with the vehicle not running. Okay, go back into codes menu now. And those two codes are current now. So there could be a problem with the ground, although I measured the ground on both the speed sensor signals. And I can't understand why we're not getting a right rear speed signal code out of this thing. I wonder if I can separate those two speed sensor wires and interchange them at that connector. I don't think you can. I think it's idiot proof, so you can't accidentally do that. But I'll have a look. Well, as you can imagine, the two speed sensors from the left and right are keyed so that they can't be accidentally connected to the wrong location. So what I've done is I've connected the right speed sensor going to the right wheel to the left connector in the body so that's basically using the right side speed signal for the left circuit and if we look at what codes it sets now it sets both the right speed sensor code because obviously it's disconnected and it still sets the left speed sensor code if I put the right side over to the right side by itself then the only code I get is the left so it's a it's a wiring problem with the left rear wheel speed sensor circuit. I'm going to try switching the speed sensors too. So at the ABS module, which is right here, I've got the connector unplugged. It looks clean and uh, corrosion free. Pins 35 and 36 are the, or sorry, 36, 37, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37 are left rear and pins 45, 46 our left front and 43, 44, or 42, 43 are right rear. These ones are right rear. So left rear, right rear. And putting an ohmmeter between ground and any of those four pins, let's try this one here, which is the left rear, shows greater than 400,000 ohms. So I don't have a short to ground on either of those two pins. So the next thing I'm going to do is cycle the key on and see if there's voltage on those pins. The harness is unplugged at the back. So measuring voltage on those four wires with the key in the run position I've got no voltage on any of the four wires so I don't have a short to voltage on those four circuits. We're going to put the two wires together at the back to physically short the wiring harness out and then we should have continuity between the two pins. So now I have the wires shorted together at the connector at the rear where the speed sensors would plug in. So the left two terminals on the left side are shorted, the two terminals on the right side are shorted. So theoretically measuring continuity of the wire should be zero. On the left side I got 5.35 ohms. And let's see if they're shorted together anyway at all. Let's see, that's between this one and this one. Definitely not low resistance and this one and this one. This is hard to do with one hand.
I'm going to stop this and connect. So pins, uh, let's see, 42, 43, 43. To the right rear show 2.73 ohms and 36 37 to the left left rear showed around four and a half ohms so the wires are are not open <coughs> don't have high resistance uh, not don't appear to be shorted together so all suggestions are that we've had we have two failed rear speed sensors which I find hard to believe but I guess it's certainly possible well, the factory doesn't suggest this as a valid test procedure. I've plugged in both rear speed sensors now at the back, and I'm going across the right rear, and it's over 4 million ohms resistance. And if I move the test leads to the left rear, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is this terminal here, and this terminal right beside it, I get a resistance of 3.48 mega ohms. Let's try the left front which is these two pins down here which does not have a problem left front and it also shows infinite we got one more we might as well do it while we're here left front right front is pins 3334 so the opposite end of this connect 3334 I didn't think there was a terminal in here oh yeah there is 33, 34, and it shows infinite as well. So the left rear speed sensor shows some kind of continuity through it, which based on the fact that the front ones don't have a problem, they measure infinite resistance, I would say, would tend to indicate the electronics have shorted slightly. But that's not a valid test, but common sense logic says which of these things is not like the others. The other problem I have though is uh, we don't have a speed signal out of the uh, right rear on the scan tool unless the scan tool isn't reading it correctly, which is certainly a possibility. Be sure you blow out any sand or grit that might be in that connector and put dielectric grease on the connector seals so that it slides in. This lock here is uh, easily damaged if it's not lubricated properly. So I confirmed the speed signals with a, a different scan tool, in this case an uh, Maxisys Elite, and uh, got signals from the left front, but neither right rear or left rear. So I'm going to order up two wheel speed sensors, hope that fixes it. The other day I was looking at the price of a speed sensor for a Mitsubishi and it was $350, basically the same technology as these, and these ones are $55. Oh, well, I'm going to change both sensors, or at least I'm going to change the left rear first and see if that fixes both by miracle. There could be some hocus pocus going on inside the ABS module where it uh, shuts down both circuits when it sees a fault from one. Who knows? The engineers don't tell us what they're actually doing with these circuits. But regardless, uh, it's not a huge expense to replace both of them either way. Uh, probably wise to just have done that in the first place rather than spending a couple of hours trying to diagnose the circuit especially when it comes down to potentially needing both sensors oh well here we go again